anyway, I was just calling, uh, I was going to, it's a little too late now, I was going to talk about some of the stuff we was talking about last night, and I was going to put it in the form of the stage that we're in now. So, we're in the stage of uh, basically kicking behind and taking names. Now, I know you don't believe it. We fixed the break. Why y'all say that, really? I, no, I don't say that. I say it because you hesitate sometimes. If I say we're doing well, you look at what, what they're doing out there, the niggas doing, and it'll, you'll think that I'm not really doing good. And you'll hesitate. I know you don't think it now, but you'll hesitate for about two seconds. You don't do that now. You're saying right quickly, yeah, you're doing fine, uh, baby, that, 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 that. But as a pattern, if you looked at it from where you're sitting, it would look like them niggas doing this, them niggas doing that. Then, you know, you would think, oh, they're taking my poor father to jail, they're doing this, they're doing. It don't look good, right? No, it's not. It's not that it don't look good. Yeah, it don't feel good. Nah, no. <laughs> if it don't feel good to you, how you think I should feel? No. But I don't. I feel you see me grin. Okay, let me ask you this. Smile. When I went to the hospital with my head busted, what did the black lady say? They were sitting there. They said, "This is the first time I ever seen anybody." Smiling after they've been brutalized like that, right? You remember that? They, those two little black ladies that was there at the desk. Yeah, they was. How is he smiling so much? Right? And what was I saying? This is just what we needed, huh? He said that you were in good spirits to have the hill. Damn, and not open, bust open. It's bust open. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, no, y'all just hang on, hold on, and uh, we're going to do, we'll go over the stuff Tuesday night for us here. That means it'll probably be right. If it's 6 o'clock here, it'll be 3 o'clock there. Right? So just be ready for around 3 to 5 o'clock on Tuesday. Three o'clock, your time. We're gonna do we do programs in the evening out here. So if we start at six, let's say, then you be ready at at three. Right? I'll be ready. Okay. Oh, you know what? what? I gotta go, I gotta go to the uh I gotta I'm real give me a ride to the uh I have to go to the uh tax place people do the taxes there. Do what taxes? The taxes for the house? No, 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 no. Okay. I got they make me I guess evidently I get one of them stimulus checks or something, I guess. Oh, well, I declare. You can share with your poor father. <laughs> How much you gonna get? Huh? How much you gonna get? Well, that's why I'm stressed I'm going to. Well, don't worry about it. I'll I'll talk to you the day before. I'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll have Set up for the time out there, the brothers here. And uh, if we want to do it earlier, like tomorrow, or we want to do it Wednesday, it's our schedule. We do basically what we want. All right, okay. But I was going to, uh, I'm also going to talk about the foolishness that, uh, that everybody's talking about right now, right out there. Yeah, yeah it's foolishness. Exactly. Yeah, it's like, uh, What did you say? What you say? What's that now? Dear brother, do you know what our family used to call my brother? Yeah. What we used to call him? <laughs> we used to call him Kingfish. Because that's the way he act, Kingfish. He act like... See, y'all like the Sanford and Son. Well, that Red Fox? But we all like the... Remember I used to turn the TV and tell y'all don't watch that stuff because uh, it pollutes your mind. Then I'd come in the house and feel the TV and it'd be hot and it'd be on Channel 5, the same place. Uh, <laughs> the sun. Come on. Anyway, it's no big deal. But we used to 
watch Amos and Andy. Right. And that was a character, I don't know if you remember that. It was a character. Okay. I, I, I've seen Amos and Andy. I, I remember it was a little bit before me, but. Right. But it was a Negro man named Kingfish. He swindled everybody all the time. Just like my brother, Leroy. All, all of us are still. We call, you know, Buddy, and myself, and uh, Slim. Slim. We call Leroy Kingfish. You seen the Kingfish today? That's the way I, he would steal anything you had. He would uh, uh, miss. He just was terrible. And he and uh, but like I say, I'm gonna close in a minute. Uh, I'm gonna give uh, all the family that's trying to steal. They're trying to steal the house. When I get this hundred million dollars, I know you take it straight. We're gonna help the whole family. You gotta remember the house that they're trying to steal. Right. Yeah, our house right there. They, you remember how we got the house, right? We had to go to court. No, we didn't have to go to court. Yeah, we was going to, we was doing it over oh, this house, yeah, but how we got the house, we got the house and we were on Sherry. Yeah, Sherry and them, then we got the house because they, we paid, look, it's a long story. But you know, when Slim passed away, he gave me his share of the house. He said, you can, you know, and Juanita, my dear sister, and, no, he died. Look, Leroy is deadly. When Slim died, you know that tornado he used to have? Yeah, that great tornado. That great tornado. My dear brother was there in 10 minutes, had to snatch that car up and was gone with the pink slip and everything. God damn. That's the way he's that That's why we call him Kingfish. He don't leave nothing look. But we love him. He's king. He, you, we know that he, that's who he is. He, I don't believe he can even help it. I don't, I don't think he can help it. You know what he told me? We was at, a, at the richest point, one of the richest points in my life. Do you remember when you was a kid and you, they brought you down to Mexico and we stayed in the, right, and the whole crew was there? Yeah. That was an organizational meeting, that's what it was. Yeah, the old. Huh? No, everybody was there. It was at the, it was at the border. It was at Tijuana, but it was on the Mexican side. So, so anyway, uh, it was wonderful because uh, Two weeks before that, I had a meeting with Leroy. You know what he told me? Because, see, he was staying at the Ramada Inn because I was paying all the bills. I told him to come down and see me. Then, and I was staying at a regular Mexican type hotel. And, you know, I had got stingy. Remember when I came home? When I left, I was the richest Negro in the world. When I came home, I was living like a poor man. Right. Remember, I, had, I left with big Cadillacs. When I came back, I had a Volkswagen, right? Yeah, a little Volkswagen, okay, because I had learned about wealth. But anyway, uh, we had a meeting at, uh, at a hotel down in, uh, in Mexico. So he was, he, I looked like I was starving to death and poor and stuff. Of course, I was rich. And he told me, you know, if it gets any worse, you could go out and you could start begging. Damn. No, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. And I was just thinking to myself, with all these poor people in Mexico, a nigga would make at least five or six pesos, which is two cents a day. You know, two or three cents. And a nigga too. And, uh, but that's the way he felt about it. You know, like, uh, where uh, he didn't say, hey man, if you need a little money, I'll send you some. I don't have much, but I'll send you some. He didn't say that. No, indeed. But that's my dear brother. And the clothes, when I went down to court, uh, when he went down to court in Florida, he told the judge, that's not me, that's my brother. You know. <laughs> and, and, my father knew and Wayne knew, but he didn't, uh, he didn't know who I knew. 
But when I was down there in Florida, and the marshal was saying, oh, your name is Reeves. Hey, man, your brother came into court the other day and told the judge, this ain't me. That's my brother. He's out of here. <laughs> the marshal was laughing. Everybody it was, it was a big joke. But it was great. So anyway, don't worry about a thing. I'll, I'll call you either. I'll call you tomorrow, and then uh, we'll work something out for either tomorrow, Tuesday, or Wednesday. And I'm glad you finally woke up. Okay, yeah. Now remember, those dogs don't belong in the house. You can take them out to that little house or put them in the garage. They eat everything up. They do everything. And I know you love them dogs. You know the funniest scene? I know, remember when we took you, your mother and I took you, we was going to let you join the 4-H club? Yeah. Yeah, the 4-H club. Because you're the only Negro in the world that liked animals like that. You know, there was nobody else that did like that. But, I mean, because you've always been like that, you know. No, you just been, you like, you love animals, and they love you. I was watching y'all laying on the bed that time I was out there, and them mutts, and y'all, y'all was just smiling at the mouth. <laughs> you just love them, dog. Tell the truth. Yeah, I love my dog, Of course you love your dog, and they love you. I mean, it's like, it's like in D.C. they say, if you want a friend, get a dog. And I know why you like them so, well, you like them naturally, but see, after messing around with niggas for so long, you know you can't get no nigga you. You wouldn't lay around with no nigga like that, like you do with your dogs, because niggas steal everything in the house, right? I know, but I'm saying, you don't generally like niggas that much. You don't like them, nobody else does either. But they like dogs. Anyway, it's a long story. It's nice talking to you. I'm going to go on and uh, close out for the day. And I'll see you soon. All right? Salam alaikum.